Beth. Beth is really ridiculously cool. She is the marketing director, I believe. Position marketing director. Director of education, and then I do a ton of marketing. We have a great marketing okay. team also. Right. A lot of millennials on the team, not me. <laughs> Love our millennials. I miss my calling as a millennial. I think I could have held my own as a millennial. Uh, so uh, what we're doing today is we've got some great flowers, and we're working this session with a very similar um, palette. Uh, these flowers came from Greenleaf, and we're just going to kind of get started, and I want to hear your feedback. If you see a flower behind me or behind Beth, and you think we should use it, tell us, and we will obey, and we will listen. And this design will, will come together uh, as we go on. So this is a bit of a competition, although I'm pretty sure both Beth and I in our own minds will be the winner of the competition. Sarah, they can't see your face. <laughs> Maybe Kenny can be the one. <laughs> Kenny, you're going to have to be unbiased. Maybe you can be the one. Or the audience can let us know. <laughs> or the audience. Oh, there we go. It's, um, is that better? No, it keeps falling. All right, I'll fix it. Hold on, technical challenges. So, I got it. so while, while Sarah's it. fixing cool. the camera, I, I thought I'd tell you guys, part of the reason why we're doing this is, one, there's an abundance of flowers right now because our supply chain is just, you know, because of what's going on, the supply chain with flowers is just kind of really cutting off and there's a lot of flowers and people, wholesalers, uh, florists are having to close their doors and we've got all these beautiful blooms to share. And to me, it's essential that we share these flowers, especially these flowers, these are flowers that um, there might not be that that many of them here for who knows how long, a week, two weeks, we don't know. So to share them with you guys and to kind of have fun and just be positive and uplift your spirits, maybe answer some questions and wherever it takes us. So thanks for the idea, Sarah. <laughs> so that's why we're here. All right. So uh, I guess I'll get started. Let me tell you what I'm working with. And I have not dreamed up my design yet. Uh, that's gonna kind of work itself out as I pull from these gorgeous blooms. So what I have here is a container, and forgive me, I do not remember the name of this container. It is an accent decor. I know it's the, the medium size, I believe. Uh, I use these all the time. They come in a smaller version and a great big version. Uh, it's nice and heavy, which I really <coughs> like. So I have I've gone ahead and lined this, but I find that they're not always waterproof, so I lined it with a little just floral foil. And then I've added my coated chicken wire, my floral mesh from Oasis, so that when the stems go in, they're gonna connect right with water. So it is it's also full of water. And then if you wanna tell us about uh, what you're using, your your container, your shape, this Actually, so this is just a little metal compote. I'm not, I think it comes from s &K. I'm not really sure where it came. Oh, or Accent Decor. It could be from Accent Decor. Um, little metal compote. And what I do with my chicken wire here. So the way that I started this is I just made like a chicken wire tube. And you can be kind of rough with this. It's not really that important for it to be really pretty looking. It really is a grid work. Um, and then I took some pussy willow and I just started creating a really cool armature using a little bit of my bind wire. And bind wire is great. I use it all the time. I just kind of let it sit on the side of my design table and I pull up from the center of it and take out what I need. I also usually will leave my wires whenever I'm using them. I won't clip them right away. I wanna show you guys the wire. I won't clip them right away because I might use that again before I'm all done. But basically it's the same concept of creating a bouquet, except I'm creating an armature. And so I did that and took my time. My dog just bumped my camera. Jack, I'm on, you stay away. Um, I just kept making an armature until I had a great armature that I was happy with that I then taped into my compost. So uh, if I would have tried to do that before we started, it probably would have taken too long. So that's why I did it ahead of time. Well, it looks great. I, I on the other hand, started with absolutely nothing. So keep that in mind. If you You're guys a real right. champion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get started. All right, who thinks we should start with Hold on, Beth, do you have tortilla? I do. My son pulled the heads off of a couple of them, but I've got three. 
Let's see, why don't I just get started? How about I pull a flower? I'd like to start with snaps. How do you feel about snapdragons, Beth? Love it. I need that line in my design. Awesome. Look at these snaps. They are huge, huge. So I think it's helpful, Beth, that as we go, we can kind of talk to everyone, tell them what it is we are doing and um, like how the design is coming together. So um, to start, I'm using my snaps. I'm pulling off any of the greenery that's going to go underneath my chicken wire because that's going to get locked up in the chicken wire. We also don't want it underwater. And then I'm going to use the snap to just start out to give myself a height. And my plan is to do some asymmetry, seeing how my friend Beth seems to have some asymmetry going on. So that's what I'm going to get started with. And I'm probably going to start just a teeny bit different. I am just, and I know you are slobbering over this jasmine. I, it, I'm just really drawn to the jasmine. So, oh my gosh, you guys, look at this jasmine vine. It is oh, amazing. It's so um, good. So I'm, I'm going to get a, just a little bit more basing going into my compo before I start doing flowers. But I'm definitely going asymmetrical, too. And I was hoping to use the snapdragons also. So um, no, gosh, this, is just, this is just one stem right here. This is amazing. Amazing. Oh, I cannot wait to get my hands on the jasmine. I think jasmine definitely has to go into this piece as well. So I'm looking at different heights here. You can see the fullness on these snaps. This one here is doesn't have quite the fullness that the other piece has. So I'm gonna just layer it, almost stair step it down while I'm placing. And that means I have to take a lot of these greens off. As you see, I started to place it in the container and I took it out because, uh, because it just was too long. I didn't want it to compete. And I also didn't want to go longer than I already had them. So that was just one stem of jasmine that I just put in this compote, and it's gone a really long way. Got a couple of little smaller pieces I'm going to go ahead and clip and put in there. I like to design with my knife usually. I'm kind of a knife designer. Are you a knife or a clippers girl? I'm a clippers girl all the way. You know that my friend Mandy Madrick had tried to teach me knife skills years ago, and about halfway through it, as I'm like bandaging my hands, she's like, yeah, no, you do clippers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I, can, I had, do you have any battle scars from, from uh, floristry? Oh, from clippers? No, no battle scars. So from I my, clipped, I clipped right here in my hand when I was oh. about two years into floral design on Valentine's Eve at the shop that I was working for. And so I have this memory of dozen roses and emergency room on Valentine's. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, well, you still gotta be careful with everything, but I do like to use my knife. I'm a knife, I'm a knife designer. We actually spent Valentine's Day at the emergency room this year. But so I always like to turn my arrangement also. So like, uh, are we are we using the same exact product? Are we trying to keep the, the same stuff? Uh, do whatever you want, Beth. Okay. Uh, if, <laughs> you can't really see something different. If you want to see Beth use a different flower, we have a lot here. Even if you just name a flower, there is a chance that the flowers are in front of us. Or if you see something in front of my in front of my display, um, let us know what you want to see out of the design, and it will happen. I'm just moving a little bit so I can get the whole design in there. And I'm going to have to move some of these flowers. I love this this beautiful frame that I have, but it's starting to limit my mobility drastically. If someone was asking what greenery are you using? Uh, the greenery that Beth is using is jasmine vine, but it is the most amazing, ridiculous, best jasmine vine in my entire career. Um, I don't know that you... Maybe Beth can tell you, but I don't know that that's what you should expect every time. What's that? Um, the jasmine vine is a green you're using. Is that normal to get jasmine vines that looks that good? No, it's super seasonal. So sometimes it's completely green with no blooms on it. Sometimes it's smaller bunches. Oh, and my, 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 my son, I think, wants to come in for just a second. So... <laughs> You need the scissors. Okay. He doesn't want to be in the video. He just needs my scissors. Sorry, 
Golden mustard rose is seriously bad. Like, <laughs> like heart palpitating. Look at this color. They are just incredible. These are definitely going to be happening. So I don't know who just suggested that, but it was great. So Beth, I'm also on live over in the um, the Intrigue Teaching Facebook group. Mandy has. Mandy has. Mandy has. I've seen you recently, right? Mandy, were you in us in Texas? I try to remember everyone and where I run into everyone, and it gets challenging sometimes. So right now what I want to do is you see this, this movement here that I've created, and I want some of these saps to point down, but the problem is I need to keep it hydrated. Now, I would give a put a water tube on here and wire it. I don't currently have that, so uh, for today, I'm going to pretend that I water tube this. Now, when I water tube, I tube it and then I tape it, so I make sure the water does not leak out. Because I do like flowers that kind of come down. Uh, I like the slope. Whatever this shape is right here is one of my favorite shapes to play with. And I tend to go monofloral when I'm designing. So I'll put everything I plan on putting in for one particular flower all at one time. Um, as opposed to doing it piece by piece. All right, Beth, you've added some other flowers. you want to tell us about those? Yeah, so I've got hydrangeas and some of these beautiful California tulips um, that we've worked in. I did a little bit of basing with just one hydrangea. I also had just a few pieces of hydrangea. So I want to show you guys, it's perfectly acceptable to use those little pieces tucked down really deep so that they're hitting the water. And this is an antique hydrangea as well, so <clears throat> it's a lot hardier. So I'm not afraid to use those little pieces in this design. I'm really just kind of getting my shape going. I want something kind of romantic and just, you know, something that really just says, makes you smile and is really beautiful. So I'm working that into my armature. I'm really not having any trouble with my stems because I have a great armature and grid work that I have going. And I always like to think about um, floral design. Um, if you look at, at a globe, if you're looking at the world, Every flower arrangement has a central access point. So if you think about a globe spinning around and all those stems are going in, they're going into the center. And I like to mirror my design. So like I might do an angular, like so I've got my tulips coming out this way. So now when I get on this other side, I'm going to mirror that and, and have them all angled in. But angled in towards that center point, that's a really key thing to do in a design like this. So I'm working on, you guys can't see the other side of it, but I'm working on kind of creating that um, diagonal, really focusing on the center point of this arrangement. Why am I keeping the tulip foliage? Yes. Oh, um, because I'm designing in my kitchen. It's actually the yeah, snapdragon foliage. I'm designing in my kitchen right now, and in my kitchen has this really cool, um, like, braided carpet that if I drop this foliage on the kitchen floor, it's going to be a disaster. So that's why I'm keeping it. So right now, this is the most beautiful stem of some Vidium orchid. The fragrance this has is just incredible. And I desperately want to use this. But as I place it, usually I will kind of hold things up before I place them. It's just too heavy for me in this design. So this beautiful stem organ is going to get saved for another day, but it will be you. All right, what should I go for next? I'm kind of feeling like yellow. You, Beth, you said something about like happiness when you were thinking about this. That was my same thought with the design is, I want this to just evoke joy. I want you to look at the piece and when I'm done with it and think, oh my gosh, that just makes me happy. Exactly. That's what we need right now, right? Yeah, we just need some, we need some distraction. Although it's important to focus, I think it's also important to not, not have your brain focus on one thing the entire time. Uh, my husband often tells me that to just try to not think about whatever it is I have in my mind. Um, and flowers are the one way that really help me not think about the rest of the world. I just kind of zone in and I see the flowers and I'm smelling them and I'm feeling them and and it, it just brings joy. Okay, these gardeners, these are the mullen, aren't they? These these gardens, these yellow green roses. 
Oh, you got I don't have yellow garden roses. You are lucky. I love <laughs> it. I was so delighted. So I really want to make sure I have a design that that is beautiful from all angles. So often I tend to design things one sided, and today I really don't want one sided because. I am home and I want to enjoy these flowers. Uh, I know some people are nice and settings are neighbors. I'm totally keeping this and enjoying this for myself. Uh, I only feel a little bit bad about that. So I'm going to stop for just a second because I just did, um, I just started a project. I'm going to come around and just kind of tell everybody. I just started a project with, we have a lot of flowers, so I'm not going to use all the flowers, but I just started a project that my son and I are doing and I don't have vases. So I'm making these little aqua bouquet holders with a piece of chicken wire, a recycled um, plastic bag, and an old tablecloth. And oh. they sit all on their own. And I, I'm going to make, I'm going to be able to make probably 20 of them with all the flowers that were, were um, that I have today. And I did my my very first Facebook live showing how to do this. So if you guys want to go over to Beth O'Reilly Kazin, that's my married name. You can watch my little Facebook live. This would be great for like Mother's Day or something like that where you just need something inexpensive. I think it's so important after what we've all been through that it, flowers are accessible to people when this is over. And this is one way to make them inexpensive and accessible and still kind of super cute, right? That is incredible. So those of you that have flowers that, uh, that did not go to the wedding or that did not go to whatever party they were planned to over the last couple of weeks, that is phenomenal. In fact, I would do the same thing. I actually don't have a plethora of vases. So I was trying to hear what I could do. But I'm going to do that. Thank you, Beth. Yes, the necessity is the mother of all invention, right? Okay, here's my biggest challenge. All these beautiful flowers you sent me, Beth. I cannot make a decision to save my life. They are all so beautiful. I know I need another texture. I've got my roses. I've got my snapdragons. All right, I'm asking you, Instagram, help me out, make a decision. Do I go protea? Do I go jasmine? Do I go ranunculus? Or do I go these really cool peach, pink, hypericum berries? I'm gonna need help because making a decision on my own clearly is not happening. Um, someone asked, you are not using an ombre effect, but rather dispersing the colors evenly throughout the composition block. Uh, I'm doing color blocking. So I tend to like, I like groups of colors. Groups of colors, to me, um, we should stop and talk about how much faster a designer that is. <laughs> um, groups of color excites me. It allows me to kind of pull in, um, pull the eye in and like, First of just big old smiles, so that's why I'm doing this. But um, I do like ombre though. Ombre will never go to style. So do we get an answer? Because I'm going protea. Did anyone make a suggestion? Berries, something. Hypericum berries. Okay, so I kind of am on the protea right now because I, I don't take it too well, as you can see. Uh, and then they'll jump over, and I will use those berries. Um, they are hypericums. I don't know the. The name of them. I'm not sure if Beth remembers what she shipped out. Um, you know what? There's so many varieties of hypericum berry, and it depends on the farm. I would tell, I would just call those coral, but they might be like a bubbles variety or something. You got a lot. Of <laughs> oh, good. That was what I wanted to use. A lot, so. and they want to see the protea and the jasmine. Yes. All right, we'll do that. So I'm having a little pro problem with my protea. Um, I think it's just the length. I definitely want protea on both sides. I could just work with protea and be happy. When this is all over, Kenny, I really would like to go to Hawaii, and I want to go tour the tropical farms in Hawaii. I, uh, Beth, you want to go tour the tropical farms <laughs> in Hawaii? This could that be fun. Sure. Because I love tropicals. I feel like I haven't been able to use tropicals as much as I would have liked in my career. So I've got my, my pin cushion protea, and these are actually, their um, botanical name is called Leucospermum, and I don't know what variety they are. Again, um, lots of farms have different names for the same looking product, so this particular one I'm not really sure. It's kind of like a peachy coral color, though, super pretty. 
Yeah, it's. I feel like I bought this and I called it Pearl, but I might have made that. I, I tend to make things up a lot. She says she can beat herself, but she wants to use the yellow Billy Balls. The yellow Billy Balls! Yes, if, I, if we don't answer, if we don't respond, um, uh, it's Mr. Campbell's fault. <laughs> if we don't respond, uh, please, please sing it again, because sometimes a lot of messages come in, and we, again, we're live on both um, Instagram and on Facebook in the Intrigue Peaches group. Unfortunately, we were not able to... Billy Balls, it is! Oh, okay. We were not able to go live together, which was our original plan, just because um, Facebook, I think, has been inundated lately. And um, as you know, we're all kind of on it. So uh, the go live together function, just I, I haven't been able to get to work this week. If anyone knows why, I would love feedback. We're pretty tech savvy over here at Intrigue. Um, but I could not figure out how to get it to work this week. All right, so I'm keeping my billy balls. Uh, in the band because I want to keep them together and I want to place them, treating them as one flower. I just want to see where I want them. I'm going to take them straight up this way. Now I have this tendency when I design is that I tend to um, start to forget about my shape. I don't know if this happens to you, Beth, but I forget about my shape and I just get, get focused on the on the flowers and I constantly have to look back and remind myself that I'm going for a symmetry. So oftentimes I'll try to fill the center. I've got a Yeah, memory. some you know that's muscle memory, you know, and sometimes depending on how we normally design and what's kind of like our our um you know our sweet spot where we're really comfortable, we might fall back into that comfort zone and you just gotta pivot. You gotta pivot out of that and step back and look. I, I, it's it's something I think every designer has to has to deal with. So I kind of have a, a color grouping thing going on here. I like I I really love to carry one type of flower and really showcase it and color group it. Again, I've got the diagonals going with my my uh, center point axis being the middle of this arrangement, and I'm just. Now I'm just starting to get into that muscle memory place that you were just talking about, um, Sarah. Just poking pretty flowers. Poking pretty flowers, yep. Angie, Angie says, uh, we had fun in Chicago with Tropical. Angie, oh my gosh, I think of you all the time. Do you know Angie is from the area in England that I was while I was gone, Kenny? Yeah, we had many conversations about the windy roads and the big hedges and it was I was hoping that I actually I think I tried to talk Angie into coming to England just to visit me. Guys traveling is fun but I definitely do get lonesome so when I'm traveling if I know someone's in the area it's always nice to connect. Someone's asking Beth if there's anything left in the cooler. <laughs> oh yeah we just got trucks in so we've been working um just here in, in, in Houston, what we've been doing is some of our really passionate, lovely, wonderful, loyal customers, um, they want to share the gift of flowers, too. And we all know that we don't want to throw these flowers away. So mm -hmm. there's been talk in the Houston area of um, some teams of designers getting together and taking some of the flowers that we still have in our cooler and um, doing an installation somewhere around Houston. So... You know, it's it's still evolving, you know, and we, we aren't letting these flowers go to waste, and I think that's the important thing. We're really trying to brighten people's day with them, just like we're doing right now. Yeah, I am. it's been heartbreaking knowing that flowers are not going to be used for their, like, this is their life. This is their intention. This is their destiny, right? They're grown to be in these designs, so not having the flowers being able to, to do what they intended is... Well, and I, I do think we're going to come out of this thinking about flowers a little a little bit differently. Hopefully. I mean, that's my hope. I kind of touched on the essentialness of, of flowers in our daily lives. And, you know, flowers are a perfect metaphor for our own existence. They're fragile. They maintain strength and sub sustenance. But they're still, you know, they're still fragile. And they still can um, succumb to things. Just like what we've seen with businesses and everything. And, uh, we look outside, and what you see is plants and flowers, and that's what God gave us. And 
to me, they're essential. They're essential part of our life. They're grown, you know, also you got to think about the agricultural part of it. Our farmers are important. Yes, food farmers are important. Our flower farmers are important. And these people are tending their crops and they're farmers. They're, you know, tending their crops and cutting their flowers and for them not to have a home and not to be shared in the way that w- that they were grown and meant to be shared. To me, like I said, it's essential. I'd love to kind of see what other people think about that. Yeah, well, you know what? I hadn't really thought about that, that these farmers still have to tend to their crops. They still have to finish out the growing process of these flowers, even though they're not going, they're, they're not going to be used. I didn't think about that at all. I mean, there's a certain amount of time they can get with, you know, not harvesting, but at a certain point, you know, and these are all crops that they've invested in. There's money invested in these crops, you know, knowing that they were going to be sold. That They run numbers just like we do, and, you know, they know how many snapdragons to put in the ground and how much of this. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about them right now also. Yeah, once once this all clears, I feel like helping our farmers is going to be really important. Like we we need them. They are they are the beginning of what we do. Without their strength, we are, don't have the beauty to play with. So I don't know what we can do, but I'm just putting it out there to everybody that I know we as a community, as florists, as designers, we are going to have to do. Do something to jump in and help. We're going to have to. And I think we have so many committed and passionate people in this industry that we're going to see some of these things happen. You know, it's it's important right now that we're sharing just each other's time and our appreciation for each other and lifting each other's spirits up. And God, what better way to do that than with flowers, for sure. Okay, so um, not to change the subject, but... Can we talk about these David Austins? I don't know if you have them, but the scent of the Yuki? Oh my gosh. Um, uh, this isn't my Yuki. This is, is this Patience? I don't know. My Yuki, my Yuki's here. My Yuki is a white one. Right? right? That's the one I thought you were talking about. That's the only garden rose I have. You got all those lemon ones. You got mm-hmm. all the mint flowers, Sarah. I'm <laughs> just teasing. Somebody but here's my Miyuki, David Austin, Alexander Farms, Love. Mm. I think what I have is patience, but I really don't know for sure. Who would invest in floral at a time like this? Would I invest in in, in buying flowers? Would, oh, give oh. me more tips on that. Um, my answer is always yes. Uh, flowers give me such joy. Uh, you can ask my husband when we go grocery shopping how often am I walking out with grocery flowers. Even though I have flowers, um, I feel like supporting our fellow designers is important. And guys, like it or not, grocery stores are a fellow designer. I feel like there's a lot of people that don't believe the grocery store is a floral designer. There are some pretty darn talented uh, designers that work at the grocery store. So it's just another outlet for flowers. That it's just another way for us to experience flowers. It's not competition in my point, in my point of view. But I would love to to answer that question. As far as uh, would you get into flowers at, after this at this time? Um, it's a very low overhead if you if you want to just start. If you have a studio space and a cool bot and you buy some flowers and you have some hard goods. You can start, you can start a floral business with a really low overhead. Now, there's other ways to run a floral business that has a lot of high overhead, but you could do that in a way, and if you're smart about it and business-like about it, you can have very, very little um, overhead to just start doing flowers, which, so to me, it's it, it's incredible. And pe- like I said, people are going to want and need flowers. Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, I think it's a matter of, of priority, like how important flowers are to you when you're asking, like, should I, I, I think that was like, should should I go out and buy food and toilet paper or should I go buy flowers? Guys, I buy both. I, I feel like it's, it's important to me to have both. Um, and in the long term, I totally agree with that, that. Jumping into the floral industry, it is a low, oh my gosh, can we just talk about how pretty this is? 
Um, it's a low budget business venture that if done right, can really have a lot of profit in it. All right, so I kind of stopped talking about what I was doing, but while Beth was, was discussing, I added those beautiful David Austin garden roses, and I have to pull out the, the order sheet to remind myself exactly what they were. Uh, and so we've got the yellow limon, and I've got, I think it's patience. If anyone knows, please let me know. Uh, and then I added the billy balls for the, another pop of texture and pop of color. Um, Kenny, I think Kathy has asked a question, but I can't read it. Can you check? So I've I've gone away from no, the color. Not. I've gone away from the color blocking a little bit, and um, I've started to just kind of disperse. So quite often I will start with color blocking, and then I will really just look at the the design, how it's coming together, and decide what colors I feel like need to go where to give myself an overall balance. I could not even begin to tell you how I decide what I like. And I think that's a great thing about designers is we get to make decisions on what we feel like is beautiful design. And I, I just look at things and I see colors that I feel like need to be together. And that is my sole decision-making process. Well, and I had a really good um, te uh, art teacher in college. And he told me that a true artist is allowed, they have a plan, okay? but they allow their plan to be flexible. And I think that's really, really good advice, especially in floral design. You have a plan, but you allow yourself the flexibility of changing the plan, especially when you're working with natural materials. So I've always taken that with me uh, everywhere that I go, and I'm so grateful uh, for him teaching that to me. So Ben just said there was a question that asks, why don't we make workshops more affordable? There definitely are workshops that um, that are, I, I'm assuming you're talking about the, the installation workshops or the large scale conferences that we host. Um, those are expensive events because we put a lot, a lot of work goes into them. It's a lot of production that goes into them, but there definitely are more workshops that you can have that are considerably lower. You don't have to start off with a large scale workshop. Um, and there's online classes that are great as well. And we have our apprentice program that you can uh, you can learn. Some of our classes are as little as $15 to, to download and learn new techniques. So um, there are lots of different ways. But uh, I agree that the, the uh, installation workshop and the Intrigue Experience Conference, they are pricey. But if you have been, uh, I think everyone would agree it is worth every penny. Just a really incredible experience and well you know what i'm so amazed at because i've been to like four or five of them now maybe even a few more i am amazed at the return attendees yes they keep coming back they get uh, they get they get a lot out of it they would not keep coming back if they didn't love it you know i am always amazed by all the return attendees and i carry a little bit of like anxiety about it when I know we have like Houston we had about half the class that they had better return attendees I mean and people from Puerto Rico and <laughs> Miami um, um, all over the place it really was like uh, and, and and people just love it they you know but you have to choose your own path you have to you have to choose what's best for you too absolutely everybody, everybody needs to choose that what are some of the online workshops um, all right, so Kenny, can you read, it, read that for me again? So what are some of the online workshops? Um, so we have, you go to um, www.intriguetees.com. You can click on tutorials, and there are dozens, maybe even hundreds of tutorials in there. Um, you can also, if you don't want to download and learn from them one at a time, you can um, join the Apprentice Program, which that is a more of a one-time payment, and then you get um, unlimited access to everything we have. Uh, I don't know who else has online workshops. Honestly, I'm uh, Beth. You might be able to know better than that. Other than me, I know I'm not the only one who does it. Who is teaching online right now? Um, so I know Ponderosa and Time is, and I know Floral Design Institute. Um, but one of the most important, exciting projects that I was working on before all this happened was a Greenleaf online school as well. So I hope to pick that back up when this is all over. Y'all stay tuned Absolutely. for that. 
I will be right there helping you with anything you need, Beth. You always are. That's, you know what? That's one thing about this community that I just, it, it, it almost brings me to tears, and I don't want to practice work. We're doing something positive right now, but the uh, community over competition is so strong with us. We really love and care about each other, and flowers, and it's it really, I think it's unprecedented. Um, even, even you, all of the designers that are out there kind of doing similar things, everybody's helping each other out. And those are the types of people that come together during times like this and innovate our industry and help help change the face of, of what our industry is going to be and look like moving forward. And we're going to need, we're going to need new people that want to come into this industry. It, it, this is not, this is not the end for sure. This is a new beginning. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's definitely going to be different, but yeah, it's different. You know, if there was ever a time to have something like this happen in the world, I got to say this is the time. We are virtually connected. So Beth and I are not even in the same time zone, and we are still connected. Um, in addition to that, the way people help, the way people come together is unlike anything that that I have seen in the past 10 years. Like right now, what Beth said about that community over competition, the way that designers come together is stronger now than I have ever seen. So if we're going to be in a challenge, now is the time to do it. So I thought I'd tell everybody about the Xanadu foliage that I'm using. And let me get out of the way a little bit so you can kind of see the Xanadu foliage. I've done a couple of techniques where I'm doing what's called sheltering, where you're just kind of like laying the product over the top of another product and getting this sheltered layer going. Um, something that I always like to do. Just thought I might mention that. So Kenny just asked a question, but I didn't know what he was asking. Do you want to ask everyone? No, no. no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Let me put you on the spot, Kenny. All right. So I'm getting to a stopping point on my design. I uh, I'm feeling really good. Kind of feel like. I, I need so a little bit more drip. Oh, they I want, haven't used a chance. Beth to add Billy Balls. <gasps> Beth, you need to add Billy Balls. You know what? I just grabbed them. Someone just read my mind. Thank you. <laughs> Billy Balls have to get used. I really like, do you guys see the Billy Balls like hanging out over here? It's really fun. All right, so I have not used my Jasmine Vine. And when I'm looking for a little bit of drip and a little more movement, Jasmine Vine is going to be perfect. I have this little hole in the back that is just screaming for a yellow rose. And I realize everybody is really just seeing one side of my arrangement. And I tend, this is me, I tend to like, you know, I'm, I'm a cover your mechanics, look at all sides of the arrangement. I really don't make, you know, a one-sided arrangement. I don't really... It's not in my wheelhouse. Even if I make something that's mostly seen from the front, I always, always cover my mechanics in the back. Um, so, so I realize I'm really working the back of this arrangement right now, and I'll keep it turning so you guys can kind of see what we've got going on. I used to be with you with covering mechanics, but i got to say in the last couple of years, I've been a lot more um, relaxed on that. Just with the way the trends have gone in design, I, it's been such a illusionary design. It's been hard for me to to really think about um, the airiness and keep the mechanics covered. So I have I've really tried to let go of that. It is a struggle though, when for so long that was a focus. Well, and I you know I'm a I'm an AIFD trained florist, so for me to not not remember those things, it's like I have to untrain myself. Yeah. So. Um, I still think it's important. It's still something I look at, but I also see what you're saying. Yeah. And I also see, you know, sometimes we can let a little bit of that go uh, for the look that we're going for and whatever the budget is, too. So I am not an AIFD trained designer or AIFD designer at all, but I am a big AIFD respecter. So for all those designers out there, that have gone through all the training and have continued to stay with it. I am really, really impressed by all of you. Well, and there's always room for more, so never say never, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my gosh, I don't fail every test. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the, the wonder who invited me to the testing. All right. And don't you have to be quiet during testing? Come on, Beth. Can you imagine me designing without talking? <laughs> uh, you can talk. I just don't think you can talk to anybody else. Oh. Oh, okay. Maybe I can. But do if that. you're talking to yourself and whatever, that's I think that's fine. <laughs> that's funny. All right. So I'm looking through this jazz and I'm trying to figure out what I want to use from it. It's all just so amazing. Oh my gosh, there's so much of it, Beth. Like this could be an arrangement. I only used one stem. <laughs> Pretty amazing. It's yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's jasmine time. So look at this. Seriously, like I am. I is it overkill if I add that? Uh, yeah, that's overkill. Okay. You know what? I think for the first time in my design career, I just said less. I need less. You need that's less. Not, that's not my <laughs> All right, let's try this. Yeah, I didn't want to put on that big giant vine and just have it take over. I love the playfulness of this. Oh, I might have to go forage from my yard and my neighbor's yards today. Uh, there's the most beautiful daffodils in my yard right now. And this jasmine vine with daffodil look amazing. So I'm just pushing this in between the flowers and then I'm weaving it through so that I get some intermingled between the blooms and I get, oops, and I get some that's gonna drip down nicely. <laughs> Oh, it makes my heart so happy. Thank you so much, Beth, for doing this. I know this was a last minute, minute decision, and I'm really glad we did. You know, there's a lot of last minute decisions going on right nowadays, so <laughs> I was happy to do it. I was glad that we could get it out. Um, we did have a little bit of issue with FedEx. FedEx normally delivers to you on Saturday, and no Saturday deliveries with FedEx due to what's going on. So we sh we pivoted a little bit and we got them to the airport. Yeah, that was fun. It's been a long time since I picked up from the airport. Uh, I had to remember how to do it. And thank God I brought my ID. Oh, really? <laughs> I Well, it was, it was easy, but I just, I realized that I was driving there. I'm like, I haven't done, I haven't done an airport pickup myself in probably eight years. So for any of you that are wondering about airport pickup, pretty much um, most of the airports have, um, like Southwest Cargo has a cooler. Most, most of the locations, there's a cooler on site. So we can send flowers the day before and they can sit in their cooler there uh, until they get picked up. You just need to have an airway bell and know how many boxes of flowers you're picking up and Make sure you know about what time the, the uh, flight is going to arrive and don't come either too early or too late. And uh, you need your ID and then you pick your flowers up. So there's tons of florists throughout the country who deal with their flowers in that way. So I, I feel like I would be doing an injustice if I did not add the cypher grass. Does anybody agree with me? I just, oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about that. I'm pretty much done here, but I have not added the stifograss, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Are, hey, you want to help me clean up? Are, are wholesale florists letting you cancel your large orders if they are two weeks out? What's that? Are, are, are wholesale florists letting you cancel your orders if they are two weeks out? Um, so, I mean, we're past that point right now. A lot of wholesalers are not able to to promise any orders at the moment. I mean, so you got to check with your wholesaler. Every wholesaler is going to have a different, um, a different way that they're handling the situation. But then there's also um, some wholesalers are mandated right now to be shut down. So they're, by law, they have had to throw out all of their flowers and oh. not do business. So that's not the case that we have right now, but we're working with a super limited staff. We don't want people to get sick. Um, we're not doing any deliveries. We're not out on the road. We just have a few people in our warehouse, and we don't know for how long. So, 
I mean, that's what we're dealing with right now. I would say on a normal, when we're in normal business mode for us anyway, we really um, try to discourage people canceling their orders because there's a lot of moving parts in wholesale that people don't quite understand the supply chain. When, when, you're, you, when we're ordering our flowers farm direct from many of our vendors in South America or in Holland, that two-week time period is what it takes. We would pre-book it with them two weeks out. So to cancel it two weeks before, we could probably handle that. We wouldn't want to do that or, or, or encourage that in any way. Um, but for some of our really good customers, we're, we're able to do a lot of different things because we are such a large wholesaler. We can move a lot of product in other ways. So we always try and help our florist with that. Um, but when you... When you're placing an order like that, you really don't want to have an intention of canceling. I know you're probably asking me for the time being right now with what's going on, but things are touch and go. So that's kind of a hard one to answer. I hope did, did I hope that helped a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I'm pretty sure that was for a um, question now because it's very rare that we ever have to cancel an order, right? If you take the time that you're sending your order to your wholesaler to get pricing, then it's done pretty much. You're, the wedding's going to happen. You're going to need the flowers. So I think this is just a just a different scenario. Well, it's definitely a different scenario. It's something that really none of us have ever had to deal with. I know I remember 2008. I remember the economic slowdown, but it was not an immediate turnoff. This has been an immediate turnoff of business and cash flow. Yeah, wow. nobody's ever experienced it before. Yes, ever. So, so I would say we're not really even taking orders for Wednesday of this week, let alone an order for two weeks out. No one really knows what, what to make of it. But as soon as um, the supply chain gets back going and, and, and things open up and it's okay and it's safe for people, right now we're really trying to social distance so that we can keep this under control and – People, it doesn't get prolonged. We all want it to be over. Um, but once we get back up and running, you know, we have great resources. We can get things. We have lots of trucks that move within um, a short time frame. So I think it's okay to wait if you've got events that you're not really sure about right now. It's okay to wait a little bit. All right. Well, I am pretty much, can you see that in that one? <laughs> I am pretty much done uh, with my design. How are you doing, Beth? I finished. I added the little touch of stypha. Um, this cute feather grass. It's the cutest feather grass ever. And I just wanted like a just a poof of something that was just really girly and kind of fun and romantic. And we, uh, I'm done. I know it's kind of hard to see this arrangement. <laughs> you can turn it around. And guys, if you if you just take the screen and you swipe like this, can can you swipe right now? Um, the comments will go away. Yep, just fine. Uh, did not work. All right, never mind. What I just told you will not work. <laughs> it usually works. Um, so anyway, so that is beautiful, Beth. I, you, so is yours. Thanks. So I think what we need to do is we need to take proper pictures. Uh, I only have a cell phone, but I think we need good photos of this and post the photos on the feed. Uh, so that everyone can see what the finished product looked like. Because it's really, really beautiful. Well, this has been super fun. Yeah, this everybody fun. got something out of it. I'll enjoy going back through the comments and answering anybody's questions that we might have missed. Yeah, I know. I've kind of been trying to read as we go. But uh, there always are things, definitely things that we missed. All right. Well, thank you, Beth. And if you need anything from Texas, I'm here in Maryland. Can't do anything, but message me. <laughs> And any of you guys watching and you just kind of want to know what's going on or you have a question for me, you can send me a, a message on Instagram or Facebook and we're here for you. We're here to support you guys. And the most important thing right now is to build each other up. You're all wonderful. Every single one of you, whether you're just starting out or you're a hobbyist or you don't know that much about flowers and you just think that this is a fun thing to watch or you're a very seasoned florist that you know, is really feeling, you know, the, the the events that have just happened for all of us here in the United States. We're all in the same boat and we're here for you. I love you all. And I know, Sarah, I know you feel the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. 
Thank you guys. Kenny, do you know how to shut this off? We're in a second. No, you don't do it there. You do it at the, at the phone. <laughs>